intrastate rivalry has consistently produced fireworks over the years. But no FSU-Auburn matchup can come close to the offensive explosion that took place in Tallahassee on October 13, 1984. Neither defense was effective. No lead was safe. It may have been the wildest 60 minutes of football in Auburn history. The Auburn Tigers. Their heroics are legendary. Deep formation handed off to Bob James, the left halfback. James breaks to the outside. Fredrickson gets the block, goes to the 20, to the 15, to the 10, to the 5. Solomon faking to Henley. Solomon's going to go very long. Four Beasley. He's there. Touchdown, Auburn. Auburn going after it. Here's a good snap. It is blocked. It is blocked. It's caught on the run. It's caught on the run. He's going to score. David Wagner. David Wagner has scored. And Auburn is tied the game. Nix is going to float one for Sanders. Sanders. Oh, he caught it. And he's high hand. Touchdown, Auburn. Touchdown. More than a century of highlights, championships, and breathtaking victories, still some games stand out above the rest. These are Auburn's greatest games. And welcome to Auburn's Greatest Games. I'm Phil Snow, along with Auburn uh, Athletic Director and Historian David Housel. David, uh, this 84 game with Florida State, uh, in the grand scheme of things, as far as the season was concerned, was not that, uh, that important. Uh, Auburn had already lost a couple of games, and yet it is a game that's on the top ten list of a lot of Auburn fans, me included, just because of the game itself. It was a fantastic football. And well, it should be on the top five, the top ten list of Auburn people who saw it, who experienced the whole atmosphere around the game. A man named Jerry Bryan once wrote in the Birmingham News, games like these come along only once in a long while. A team and its coach prove themselves great on the inside, where the heart is. The public watches, understands, and is proud. This game with Florida State in 1984 was one of those games. Going into the season, it was supposed to be the game that would decide the Heisman Trophy battle between Florida State's Greg Allen and Auburn's Bo Jackson. I don't recall what kind of year Greg Allen had, but we, of course, lost Bo against Texas earlier that, that year. But it so often happens in the affairs of man. When your leader falls, when the flag bearer falls, others step forward to fill the gap. That's the very nature of competitive athletics. Didn't have Bo, out. but we had Brent Fullwood. Had Brent Fullwood, you had Kyle Collins, you had Collins Campbell. That's what we're about to see. It was a great night for Auburn, for this football team, this coaching staff, but more than anything else, it was a great night for those, those young men who stepped forward when needed. Uh, some unknown guys like uh, Eddie Graham, which uh, whom we will meet in a few minutes. So let's go into the first half of this great football game and see what they call a real honest-to-goodness college shootout. Auburn won the toss and would receive the opening kickoff on this hot, muggy evening in Tallahassee. At quarterback for the Tigers was Pat Washington, whose 17-yard gain moved Auburn close to midfield. On the very next play, the normally run-oriented quarterback crossed up the FSU defense. His pass to freshman Freddie Wagan gained 51 yards, setting up Auburn inside the 10. On third down, a pass to Jeff Parks fell incomplete. So on fourth and goal from the one, the Tigers went for it all. Inside in, Smith to forward, he dies, he's in! Touchdown Auburn! Brent forward hurtled over the pile and went into the end zone from one yard out on fourth and goal. And Auburn on its first series of downs has struck for a touchdown with 13. On the Seminoles' first possession, they wasted little time in moving the ball downfield. With gifted receivers like Hassan Jones and the Heisman Trophy candidate and Greg Allen carrying the ball, Florida State would be hard to stop. 
Still, they would be forced to settle for a field goal this time. And here's the snap, the placement, the kick is away, plenty long, and the kick is good. Late in the first quarter, with the score still 7-3, to three, the Seminoles began to move the ball again. And here they are in the eye set for the slot left, and Thomas is going to pitch to Allen. He said he caught up the ball! It is loose! They're putting for it! And over has got it back in the Florida State 40 yard line! Jimmy Bowen fell off the ball! And Craig Allen was really wrecked and popped at about midfield, and the ball popped loose and rolled all the way back inside Florida State 40. Hollis Campbell, who was filling in for the injured Bo Jackson, then got eight yards on this carry, setting up second and short. But the Tigers could not muster a first down and would have to settle for a Robert McGinney 36-yard field goal attempt. The kick was good, and Auburn led Florida State 10-3 after the first 15 minutes of play. The Tiger defense asserted itself at the beginning of the second quarter. Solomon and Gaynor, the split receiver. Thomas the throw, big rush, they got him! Rush got him back and outside the 40-yard line! Greg Carr's heroics effectively put an end to FSU's threat and put the Auburn offense back in business. The Seminole defense responded with a good series of its own, and Auburn was forced to punt from its own 22. Snipes is deep in safety for FSU. Big rush, they got it, it's locked, and it's locked out of the end zone to the near side. It's gonna go out of bounds, they say, on Auburn's three-yard line. Giving the ball to FSU deep in your own territory makes scoring almost automatic. It took only three plays for quarterback Eric Thomas to find the end zone. Fake on the play action and throwing in the end zone. Touchdown is Thomas. Thomas fired a bullet to Pete Pants on the tight end after. Suddenly, the score was tied 10 to 10. Auburn's early advantage was gone. The Seminoles appeared to have swung the momentum in their favor. Washington will pitch. It'll go to Thomas Campbell, who's in the backfield. Broken tackle behind the line of scrimmage. 30, 35, 40. He's in the 45. He's in midfield. He's in the 40. Down the sideline. 30, 25, to the 20. Still on his feet. It's 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Auburn! Yeah, I said they need a big play. They just take it uh, some 69 yards for a touchdown. It was a great block. I do not know who was in at right halfback, but somebody made an outstanding block that cut the defensive back of Florida State feet out from under him, and Colin Campbell, when he gets going, what a pleasant, pleasant surprise. Number 38, Collis Campbell intends this Auburn football team. With Collis Campbell's bow-like effort, momentum swung back to the Auburn side of the field, but FSU had plenty left in its bag of tricks. Fortunately for Auburn, Florida State was penalized for an illegal forward pass on the return. The Tiger defense retained its upper hand for the time being. The Seminoles went out quietly with three plays and a punt. With 9.04 left until halftime, Coach Pat Dye wanted to extend the Auburn lead while taking time off the clock. Two Pat Washington aerials to wide receiver Trey Gaines set the stage for Brent Fullwood. Pat Washington, the quarterback, runs the option pit. It'll go to Brent Fullwood. He dodges the tackle. He's in! Touchdown, Auburn! Great mark by Tim Jesse on the corner. And Fullwood takes it in from five yards away. And Auburn moves up 22 to 10. The Tigers had extended their lead. But more than five minutes still remained until halftime. Still plenty of time for the Seminoles to strike back. And strike back they did. Thomas, play fakes, and he's going to go long. Got a man wide open, and Hester, he's got it. He's going to go all the way. Touchdown, Florida State. Hester had everybody beat by five yards. Hold it in over his shoulder at the 25-yard line, and he was history. They fake to the fullback. The Auburn quarterback just bit on it. I think it was Alvin Briggs. He bit on it. Jesse Hester, there was no one within 20 yards of him. Eric Thomas just laid it up. Hester ran under it. Easy six points for Florida State. 
The score was now 22 to 17, but the Seminoles had gotten a huge lift and were back up to old tricks. The reverse worked 16 yards and a first down on the Tigers 41. There, the defense stood its ground and forced FSU to attempt a 56 yard field goal. His longest 54 yards, this one is blocked. It is blocked and the ball is rolling around loose and the marker goes down. Well, the marker is gonna, Gerald Robinson, number 95, block it. He tried to lateral it forward, so they're gonna get Auburn for an illegal lateral, but Auburn will, will retain the ball here. At the half, Auburn led by a score of 22 to 17. The game was already a thriller. Little did the participants know the fireworks were just beginning. Auburn with the lead at the half in that uh, game. Uh, three voices you heard there, Mike Hubbard's uh, narration, Jim Fife with the call of the game, and a third voice that uh, you may have recognized that of Pat Sullivan, who was the color commentator for the game. Color commentator for the Auburn Network at the time, later became an Auburn assistant football coach, and later head football coach at TCU. Actually, Phil, Pat was uh, one of several people involved in and around that game who went on to head coaching careers. Coach Dye, of course, at Auburn. You had uh, Jack Crow, later head coach at Arkansas. Bobby Wallace, head coach, won a national championship at North Alabama and Larry Blakeney, who has been successful at Troy State. Pat Washington, number 10, the quarterback for Auburn, is, uh, has done some coaching in a number of schools, including Tennessee. Probably Pat's greatest game as a college quarterback. Whoever won that game, the quarterback had to have a great yeah. game, but you're right. They both had tremendous games. You it's think. interesting about that game, Phil, is that uh, the, the difference in personalities that particular Auburn team had at that point in the season. The week before at Ole Miss, Pat Washington and the offense and held the ball. It was a 17-13 game, and Pat Washington and Kyle Collins and the Auburn offense held the ball for like eight or nine minutes of the fourth quarter, and just they never scored, but they just ran the clock out. Ran the clock out. It was a tremendous win. They played defense, run out the clock that week. They get into a 42-41 game at Florida State in the game we're watching. The week after this, Auburn played Georgia Tech in, in Auburn. Got up 41 to nothing at the half and had to hold on to win 48-34. So these were these were interesting weeks and interesting times in Auburn football. For Pat Dye, I, I bet you, <laughs> because he did he was notice, a great man on the personality of a team. He wanted to know who they did were. Did you notice how young Coach Dye looked? Yes, there. I it. bet he aged tremendously <laughs> in those at that three week span. All right, we we're about to see uh, maybe the defining moment of the game, one of the strange plays that uh, you'll ever see in uh, college football. Let's talk a little bit about, uh, we'll come back and talk about Eddie Graham afterwards, All but right. let's, let's see the opening kickoff of the second half of the game. There's the kick by Barco. Two yards into the end zone is Fullwood. He'll bring it out to the 5 to the 10, straight up the middle of the field to the 20. Fumble the football. Florida State's going to get it on the left. Auburn picked it up. They're going to try to run with it. Can he go? Can he go with it? It's Eddie Graham who has the football, and he's going to go the distance for a touchdown. Touchdown, Auburn. Yep. Touchdown, Auburn. You cannot... Fullwood fumbled the ball, and Graham picked it up and ran with it. Big, big play for the, for the Auburn football team to start the second half kind of got me caught by surprise. And ladies and gentlemen, just like that, Auburn has moved up 29 to 17. We have picked up where we left off in the first half. <laughs> you heard the hesitation of, of Jim Fife in making that call after the game, David. I asked Pat Dye, did you know you could advance the ball? He didn't say he didn't know. His answer was, did you know? <laughs> I don't think he knew. I certainly did Carpe <laughs> seize the day, seize the moment, seize the opportunity. You know, people are always talking about the role of luck in the outcome of college football games. You have a 42-41 game, and you're lucky, you were unlucky, that kind of thing. But I believe, and I think most people around the game believe, that luck comes when preparation meets opportunity. Mm -hmm. now, I don't know whether Ed Graham, who is now a stockbroker on Wall Street, uh, he probably knows a lot more about stocks and bonds than he knew about football rules on that particular play. But he had an opportunity, and the worst thing they could do was call it back. So he was prepared and, and had the opportunity and call it lucky, call it being good. 
on that particular instant, I'd rather be lucky than good any day. Eddie Graham said, I didn't know, but I was certainly not going to stop and ask. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's amazing how uh, Auburn walk-ons step up to, in great occasions, we talked about Bill Newton and the block punts, and here's Eddie Graham, suddenly his moment in the sun, and he made the play. Kyle Collins, Kyle another Collins. walk on from Gadsden, Alabama, had a big season. Uh, some say Backing up both. That's right. When Bo went down, Kyle Collins stepped forward and, like Isaiah of old, said, here am I, send me, and that the Auburn Tigers did. That gave uh, Auburn a pretty good lead at the moment, but as you know, the Florida State Seminoles are known for offense, and they are going to come back and even uh, take the lead in this game. It's going to be some kind of second half, and let's show that to you now. Despite trailing now 29-17, to Florida State was undaunted quickly mounting an impressive 10-play drive from its own 34. Jesse Hester nearly scored on this play, but the pass was overthrown. The touchdown ultimately came with a little razzle-dazzle. Greg Allen acted as the decoy and handed to number 24, Darren Holloman, who scored from 10 yards out. The score seemed to stagger the Tigers. Now the pesky Seminoles were trailing by only five points. They fired away at the Auburn defense. Ball between the hash marks for the Seminoles. Here comes the blitz again, throwing in the end zone. Touchdown, Thomas to Hester, I believe. Let's see who caught the ball. It was Nathan Jones, who was well covered by the Auburn defender, but caught it in the near corner of the end zone. Now, FSU would go for two. Florida State going for two from the eight. And Thomas throwing in the end zone. It is caught. Two-point conversion. Florida State had the lead for the first time. Now, it was Auburn that answered the Here's goal. Washington faking on the inside handoff, rolling out under a lot of pressure, and he's going to throw long for Freddie. He's got it on another great catch inside the Florida State 20. Two plays later, Pat Washington took it in himself and Auburn had the lead back, or so it seemed. A clipping penalty was called during Washington's run, and an unsportsmanlike conduct call was added on. The touchdown was erased, and the threat ended. At the end of the third quarter, FSU continued to lead 32-29. to As the fourth quarter began, Auburn's defense held to force an FSU field goal attempt. Out of the hold of Toker with an angle to the right. He kicks it away. This one is good. The Florida State lead was now six points, but the Tigers battled on. They were now fighting exhaustion, the sellout crowd, and the Seminoles. With Pat Washington leading the way, they marched the length of the field. Finally, another backup, Kyle Collins, took it in for the score. Washington on third and five will pitch to Kyle Collins, turns the corner to the five, got his first down, he drives, he is going to be in, touchdown over! And what a block by number 14, Freddie Wagan. The play was delayed, it, it took a long time to get out there, and Freddie Wagan just stayed with the defensive back and shielded him off, and Kyle Collins, with good effort, carried it in for a touchdown. Great run by Kyle. With the extra point, Auburn led 36 to 35. Still, more than 10 minutes remain. And in this barn burner, that seemed like an eternity. FSU's offense had so many weapons. Roosevelt Snipes, Eric Thomas, Hassan Jones. Any one of them could beat you. Snipes' 33-yard gallop took the ball to the Auburn 10. Thomas under the blitz is going to throw in the end zone. It is caught. Touchdown. They have found Hassan Jones, who popped the ball, was hit hard by Kevin Porter in the corner of the end zone. Drove him out of bounds, but they ruled he had a foot in. And Florida State goes back on top at 41 to 36. Florida State would go for two, but number 40, Arthur Johnson, and the Auburn defense would have none of it. 
FSU led 41 to 36 with 320 left to play. It would now take a touchdown to win, nothing less. Pat Washington would not be deterred. And they're throwing the Wagan, good at the 45, and Wagan's down the sideline, midfield, 45, 40, 35. Wagan is going to be out of bounds inside the Florida State 30 at the 27 yard line. Billy Allen, the last man who had his chance, knocked him out of bounds. Jim, I just said if they could get to the 30 yard line with a minute and a half to go, I think they'll win the ball game. They come out and throw the little hitch pattern to Freddie Wagan. He breaks the tackle, streaks down the sideline, almost carried it all the way. With the clock now under two minutes, every play meant life or death for the Tigers. After a first down catch by Jeff Parks, Brent Fullwood dashed to the far side and got all the way to the FSU 5, setting up the play of the game. He's going to pitch the ball, what's to get outside? He dies for the pylon. He's in! He's in! He's in! He's in. Touchdown, Auburn! Touchdown, Auburn! Touchdown, Fullwood from four yards away! And the Tigers, the Tigers have done it. They marched literally the length of the field and gone ahead. 42, 41. Florida State would get one more chance but it was snuffed out by the Auburn defense. This one belonged to the Tigers once and for all, 42 to 41. A little known fact, David, the last play of the game was a long pass from Florida State that uh, just as it was caught, he stepped out of bounds. The clock ended. If they had been a, if they'd had a second on the clock, they could have kicked it something like a 53 or four yard field goal. I have no doubt they would have made it. That's I'm the way that was insane. Is and they're probably going to cut this out of this final take. But that don't matter. If ifs and but if ifs and buts for candy and nuts, well, I'll have a merry <laughs> Christmas. It doesn't matter. It's 42 to 41. Okay. You know, it, it makes you look at it, and and you still get kind of limp <laughs> thinking about that. The game was not on television. Auburn had 8,000 tickets. I wonder how many people remember seeing it. Oh, I'm sure uh, 210,000 Auburn people were there that night and saw that 42-41 to 41 game. One person who was not there, a man whose name would later become synonymous with Auburn football, Terry Wilson Bowden. Fifth week of the season, his Salem College team beat West Virginia Tech 56-9. And I guess, I'm sure when his daddy or mother called him to tell him the score, he couldn't believe it. <laughs> Your research amazes me, Mr. Howell. Uh, another thing. Uh, let's look at the stats for a second and, and uh, just see the amazing numbers in this game. Uh, look at the total offense for Florida State down there. 591 yards, and they did not win the game. Isn't that amazing? Just amazing. Another thing I remember, David, you know, you can always judge big wins, the, the, the largeness of the victory by the enthusiasm of the War Eagle song in the dressing room. They sang so loud and so hard that the left side of the dressing room was about three or four beats ahead of the right side by the time it ended. It was, uh, you know, one sound more beautiful when you're on the road in a big game than the sound of War Eagle in the dressing room? It's the sound of silence. <laughs> when you leave the field and all the other team's fans have gone. <laughs> yeah. Morgan in the dressing room is beautiful at any time, but the sound of silence when you went on the road is the most beautiful sound of all. And there was a lot of silence in Tallahassee, Florida that night. Uh, yeah, they went quietly that night. One of Auburn's greatest games. David, thank you for being with us, and we hope you'll join us again soon for another of Auburn's greatest games. <laughs>